Taurus, my love. I am super excited and nervous all at the same time for this message, okay? I have to sit with it for a while because um, Spirit has placed it on my heart to share something personal with you. So I hope that whoever this message is for, that you're able to extract whatever message or confirmation that or wisdom from my own personal story that you'll be able to utilize in your personal lives. Um, this message isn't going to resonate for every single Taurus, um, as all of us are on different paths or different parts of our journey, right? But who it will resonate for is someone that has had a very hard, let's say the past three years for you. It's been very difficult. Um, either you have been traveling to avoid going back home. Either you have been, either you're going back home or you've been traveling a lot and you're about to return home. Um, and when I say home, like let's say, for example... You're in the military, right? You may travel overseas, um, be on active duty or something to that degree. And now you're returning back to your home base or wherever that base is for you. For others of you, you may have been born in another country and you are returning back to those lands, right? Or you are already in that home country and you're wanting to branch out and go back to another place that you call home. It's... An overall energy of overcoming some type of restriction, overcoming some type of blockage, and giving yourself the freedom to not care what anyone else thinks, um, not try to force an opportunity or make something work, but really just to kind of give it back up to the divine and allow forward movement, whatever is to come of the situation, you are having the walking with this type of reassurance that you're not alone, right? You're not worthless. You're not poor. You're not a castaway. You are significant. You're worth more than riches could ever provide. Um, so for many reasons, it feels as if, how can I explain it? Um, you're being guided down a specific path, right? And this is a hidden path that's being illuminated for you. It's like a third choice, right? For some of you, pride may be keeping you where you are right now due to what would people say if I fail at that relationship? What would they say if I fail at that career or I fail to commit to something that I put my mind to? For others of you, there's... What if I miss my opportunity? What if I what if I stuck it out a little bit longer and I got that raise or that promotion or I stuck it out a little bit longer and that person came back around? What happens if I completely close those two voices and I surrender this entire situation or this entire worry over to a higher power? I feel like that path energetically is being illuminated to you and it's going to be a path that only you will see because it's going to be revealed in the spirit. It's going to be revealed like in your tunnel vision. It's going to be tied closely to your focus, right? And when I say your focus, what, where or what is your heart guiding you to do? Okay, the song that came up for you, Taurus, was... I think it's called listen to your heart when it's calling for you. Listen to your heart. Yeah. So that song, listen to your heart is you may want to listen to that lyrics. Like I said, this feels very emotional. It felt like, um, like just being put out there to not know, but being asked to have faith and trust that you'll, the, 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 the right choice is going to manifest to you, even if it feels like it's coming at the last minute. <laughs> it's like your heart is going to be guiding you, not your mind, not your worries, not your fears, but your heart. There's also something about a guide that was assigned to you. 
Mm -hmm. This guide is passing you off to someone physical. Okay. I heard that I'm passing the phone to someone that knows how to do this, or I'm passing the phone to someone that knows how to do this. So the communication that you're going to be receiving is going to be to the next person that can help you and facilitate you along the way. But it does feel like um, this is someone that has no ill intentions towards you. This is someone that would never betray you or hurt you. Um, this is someone that's willing to compromise and grow and stick it out with you. And that's where you're being guided to go. Um, it feels peaceful. It feels like another person in the physical flesh that aspires for the same type of lifestyle or the same type of harmony that you desire for yourself. The intentions is what is calling to each other. That's the energy that I'm picking up on. Um, it feels like to me, like how deep the emotions is, how much my body is responding to the energy. Like I want to cry, but I'm not about to cry. <laughs> but I feel like um, a deceased family member or friend, this may also be like a, a close pod or relative, um, that's not directly related to you, but sometimes guides will come in that have, have had similar journeys as you, and they learn from you with, with observing how you interact on your 3D plane, and then in turn, there's some type of karma that's cleared out when those guides from other pods come in and collectively work with the collective consciousness. So it feels like this deceased loved one, family member, whatever is passing you off or passing you over to someone in the physical flesh that will help you heal further or that will help you um, help guide you further. Right. Um this has to be a guide that you've been communicating with for some time. Um, yeah. So in the recent past, you would have felt like there's been less and less communication, less desire to tap into the frequency of that loved one or that loved one is not as loud or as prominent or as active in your life. And... Over time, it's like um, they're going to be like handing you over to another frequency. It's like emerging and tapping you into the frequency of your true love in the 5D. So it, they're all kind of one, but it's like if you, if you think about nozzles on a volume or on a, I saw nozzles like on a, a switchboard. Okay, so something's being increased. It may be like the bass is being increased. Um, I heard bass, trombone, or something like that. There's, it, It's a switchboard. I don't know what to do with a switchboard, but they're saying like something is being switched and something is being dialed down and something else is being increased, okay? They want you to know <laughs> its intentions, okay? They want you to know why... Many of you have been feeling distant to that guide or distant to that loved one that was once very prominent with you. So that's the overall gist of the message. If that resonates with you, I'm going to go ahead and um, speak about my personal journey and what spirit put it on my heart to talk about at this time. And it's in regards to my dad, right? So let's go back to 2020 valentine's my dad passed away right um but prior to him passing i had a very estranged relationship with my father okay as a child i was very disappointed um with him he was disappointed with me and we kind of had this he was more forgiving than I was and the crazy part about it is we're both Tauruses so my mom's a Taurus and so is my dad and I'm a Taurus and we're just one big ass house of Tauruses okay so long story short um he was a big disappointment to me as a child I blamed him for 
you know, him not being an active father. I resented him for not protecting me and my siblings um, from like pedophiles and narcissists and really just kind of checking out. I felt like my dad checked out as a father and he was pretty much majority of his life. He was in the military and then he got honorably discharged and so he was home. So they have 12 kids together. Um, I'm the eighth child. So from my perspective, I got the see I got to see the side of him that was really like over it. He was over being here on earth. He was, you know, over the role or responsibility that I felt like he needed to perform. Um I also was angry with my parents for living this double life, pretending to be happy, right? Trying to stay together being like I felt like it was two two lifestyles there was one that the rest of the world saw and then there was one that we lived at home and it was very unhealthy so I had a lot of built up resentment towards my dad most especially because I feel like because my mom like, even though they were in a relationship until they got divorced I felt like my mom was still a single parent even though they were in the same house like my dad I felt like he wasn't doing anything. So that played a big role in my perspective of a healthy relationship. I looked for love in all the wrong places due to my resentment that I have for my father. That resentment that I held towards him kind of set up so many other so many other paths like they were being created as this experience was happening, right? And the love and affection that I felt like I didn't receive from him resulted in me sealing my own fate, right? Resealing my own fate, my own karma. It was almost like the fate of my resentment to him was assuring that I would have to learn a hard lesson about resentment, regret, and things like that. It sealed my fate. And as a developing young girl, I was very clingy needy um and I felt empty and I wanted love and I wanted it really bad and I was willing to go after it kind of like chase after it a little bit and yeah the way I chose to perceive my circumstances kind of assured that I would experience many many years of learning what love is genuinely like self-love really understanding what that means at its core and long story short I stayed away for years um I rarely visit my father or my mother um I found myself in a very toxic karmic relationship where there were a lot of pride around what my family would say right my siblings they them being able to laugh at me because I took a very prideful stance like when my dad was alive you know, I was that child that was like, you need to get up. You need to do this. You need to be more involved. You need to, you know, be a father. Like, I was always on his ass. I was always trying to tell him what to do. I was miss know-it-all, right? And, you know, he just brushed it off. He was like, girl, sit down. Like, so he always had that attitude to me of, like, he just brushed me off. He never really took anything personal. Um... And I always appreciated that about him. But long story short, like I was saying, the pride of what my siblings would say that for them to be, because they used to always say to me, um, as much as you get on him, you're going to end up being just like that or something like that. So the pride of other people being able to say you're going to be in a relationship just like that kept me in the relationship, right? Or the pride of, of people telling me it wasn't going to work kept me in the relationship. So there was multiple layers to what I perceived love to be so I gave myself the illusion that I was in love by saying just staying together was love right so I didn't understand that that need to be with each other was codependent in nature okay I hope you follow me when I'm saying that um I didn't want to be a failure the harder that I tried to keep the relationship together, the more it fell apart. 
the more I tried to paint the perfect picture, the more he stepped out. The more I tried to control the environment and change myself to, you know, fit whatever narrative that he felt was the excuse as to why he wasn't able to show up in the relationship or he wasn't able to to express that same level of love. I made excuses with him, right? So, and then I justified it by saying I didn't want to lose an opportunity or I saw the potential in him and I wanted him to, I wanted to see that come into fruition. So I became more invested and more in love with the idea of love than actually being in love because I didn't know what that looked like. In a nutshell, the more I invested in filling his voids, the more drained I became and the more insecure I ended up being at the end of our relationship. So the hardest thing for me to do in any any type of tie like this was for me to admit to myself that I wasn't in love. When I listened to my heart and I actually paid attention, the rebuttals weren't weren't as loud as what my heart wanted. My heart wanted to be anywhere but there. My heart didn't want to be there. So at the time, it wasn't even trying to get to another person. It was like, my heart wants to be free. My heart wants to see. I know this isn't the end for me. I know there's better out there. Um, But I knew on a genuine level, I didn't truly love him. And I'm speaking from myself because it's an accountability thing. Um, And I was making myself love him by showing up for the connection and compromising just to keep the peace so this energy of um keeping the peace even though it's unhealthy keeping the peace even though it's for the sake of the kids the money or whatever the whatever the needs are is the unhealthy part and I I was making it harder for myself because I was telling myself um that I didn't want to be like my parents right And I wanted my children to have a different experience than the one that I had. And all of it was illusions. All of it was illusions, rose-colored glasses. Um, So it wasn't until my father passed away. So when my father passed away, that's when my gifts even activated. That's when I saw him everywhere. I saw my father everywhere. I saw signs everywhere. I could actually feel my father's presence everywhere I went and prior to his death we didn't really have a relationship like I said I stayed away and there was times where I did come around him before he transitioned and it was like I was called back towards him and I didn't know why but really my daughter kind of brought us back together because I was pregnant and I wanted her to know her grandfather right Um, And he was struggling with his own health issues that he was keeping to himself. He wasn't really sharing with anybody else outside of the people that he wanted to know. So we got to have a lot of conversations that we got to talk about, you know, why he did certain things, why he made certain choices. And I was at a better, I was at a more mature phase in my life to be able to receive his truth and his autonomy, right? I realized that he kept speaking in parables or like riddles and those riddles didn't make sense until after he passed away. So for some of you, I do feel like you may be like very strong medium or you have a strong relationship with the spiritual realm and how you channel those messages, right? How you receive those downloads. It's very intense. I will say that one the last time that I saw my father come to me in a dream um it was one night he was telling me that he was preparing me for something and he couldn't tell me everything but that he wasn't going to be helping me anymore that I pretty much had healed enough to be able to to learn from someone else so now I felt like my inner child got some of the attention that it needed and I was ascending to a position in my life where now I'm healing my adolescence. Um, I'm healing my young adult phase of existence. So come to find out, y'all, the bridge that connected me to my father 
was also how I developed my mediumship gifts, right? So he told me that he was going to connect me with those on the other side and he would translate it for me so I would feel comfortable. So because I recognized his voice, I didn't like speaking to anyone else. Um, that was an unfamiliar spirit or unfamiliar tone of voice, right? <laughs> it's funny thinking about it, looking back on it now. And I'm, I know spirit isn't going to have me say all of this for no reason. So just bear with me, okay? Um, so that relationship that I had with him in death it fulfilled some type of karma. It fulfilled some type of experience that he still owed me and I still owed him. It also was very healing and forgiving at the same time. So in 2020, I would say that's the last time. 2021 was the last time that I worked with my father's energy. Um, I didn't feel his I didn't feel his uh, wheelchair anymore. I didn't hear his sounds. The, the messages stopped. And that's kind of like how I was able to to recognize the transition between moving spirits or shifting energy. So he kind of was teaching me at the same time. Um, but immediately after that, I got a new guide, right? And he was someone that I dated. When I got this new guide, he appeared to me. First of all, I had absolutely no idea that he passed away. Uh, he had a little situation with um, someone else he was dealing with. Long story short with that, I started to receive messages of that familiar voice, right? Dur during the time that he passed away. And when I found out that he, the day that he passed away, it all started to click. And then I started to realize that my dad was passing me over to the nearest person that I would need to transition and communicate with. Um... That relationship was very important. If any of you have ever seen my old Taurus videos, the relationship that I had with him was very pivotal in my development for my self-love journey because he was the first time I got to experience what a good male energy looked like in the physical form, okay? So even though our time together wasn't as long and... It wasn't forever. It was necessary. Even the relationship that I was intended to have with him in the spiritual realm was also necessary. Um, he also had a contract with me to help heal the archetype, right, of a masculine energy and the, the illusions of what that's supposed to look like. All of those were broken down due to that relationship or that connection with his him in the physical and in the spirit. Uh, one thing I can say about those type of significant players in the game or in the matrix, they have a very consistent, mature energy that doesn't change no matter the circumstances. And it's really hard to let that energy go on a physical level because... They set the bar so high. You feel me? So he kind of helped anchor in my high standards. Um, which is why even though we weren't able to be together forever. In this physical realm. He, off, he left me with something that would last forever. He gave me a gift of perception that can never be changed, erased. Okay. It was like imprinted permanently. <laughs> so I'll pop it for you in a second. Um. So I believe the reason why spirit is having me share with you all of these details and share my personal story is because you don't believe something is for you. I don't know what it is, but maybe you've had similar experiences to mine. Maybe uh, you haven't had them yet. Either way, the only fate that we seal for ourselves to experience is the ones where we are left feeling resentment, regrets, and the expectations we place on ourselves and others. This is what creates the karma. This is what perpetuates the karma. This is why we are here to be able to dis to determine the pattern, to be able to see the pattern, identify it, and change the way in which we perceive experiences. Again, it's the regrets, resentment, 
and the expectations that we place on ourselves and others. This is how we get locked into that grid of karma, of repeating the same things of our forefathers and things like that. So whatever this temporary separation is, because I do feel like there's, like I said in the beginning, there's a guide that is transitioning you over to a physical relationship. And for some of you, this is a person that you've been temporary, temporarily separated from. Um, I don't know if you was with this person, like you haven't seen this person in years or whether or not this was a soul contract that you established with someone before incarnating here. Either way, um, as generational curse breakers of your family or your lineage or whatever struggles that your bloodline has, it's like our deceased loved ones want us to be able to do what makes us happy. They want us to have no fear around breaking these bonds of illusions that we have picked up while being on earth. Ultimately, our deceased loved ones want to see us just happy. They want to see us with no regrets, no remorse, no resentment, and no constructs of expectation that prevents us from thriving and truly enjoying the life, not from a sacrificial lamb standpoint, but from a liberated, free standpoint. The wisdom that they acquired on their journey was for you to make it, was for you to break ground, take trips, uh, do things that they could never do, um, eat better if they struggle with health issues, you know, eradicate certain diseases if they, if you watched them suffer with diseases, whether you are watching this from the outside or you're the person delivering the message all of us are chosen to do the same exact thing I'm no different than you are just like you're no better than me I'm no better than you we're just on different phases of our journey so this is going to go out to a lot of you that are being of service as well to other people trying to be everything or be everyone for the rest of the world because people are going to talk people are going to do things opportunities will come and go but when you reach that agreement within yourself that the life and reality that you want for yourself supersedes anything anyone else has to say about you or to you it's another type of freedom and I feel like that's what this message is really about Really setting yourself free. I feel like they're super proud of you. Yeah, we have, look at that, family. They're super proud of you, how far you've come. It's like they're on the other side cheering y'all on. And it's no, it's no coincidence, right? This is exactly why we're going into Scorpio season. And this is where everything that we weren't able to say or do they come back and they talk to us and they tell us their truth every single time they want to see you win they want to see you success see you successful at whatever endeavors you want for yourself they want to see you optimistic but i really feel like someone is being presented with the opportunity but they don't want to do it so I don't know if this is you or someone that you're connected to, but one of you guys um, may be still holding on to a karmic relationship. And like I said, I gave you my whole story. We all have played the role of karmic at some point on our journey. The only way we learn is through going through karma. So it's not a good or a bad thing. It just is what it is. It's not personal. And I feel like that's the, the higher self perspective. I 
Okay, what's your channel message to Taurus? So we got the vast universe in reverse. Possibility. Someone has given up all hope. I loved and I've lost. Hmm. I pick up this energy of like not wanting to be single or being afraid of going back to the past. So there could be some illusions of someone believing that, you know, when you make decisions in your past and you close the door to certain opportunities, I'm sensing that someone believes that you should never go back to old friends. You should never go back to old relationships. That's like a vow or a commitment that someone has made. Um, if that is a vow or a commitment that someone has made to themselves, it is something that was taught to them. Alpha Draconian, corrupt, unethical cults. Um, damn. I wasn't expecting to see that. <laughs> it's something that was indoctrinated. It's something that was taught. Like, this is religion. This is fixing. Fixing you to your stained glasses. Your stained rose-colored glasses. Your stained perception. And then keeping you stuck to it. And it keeps you reincarnating here over and over and over again. exploring life from all levels of the kingdom like i mean this is animal kingdoms okay so you may feel like a superior race but really or superior intelligence to like the animal kingdom or the mammal or whatever but or the insect kingdom but what i'm seeing here is this is this is a great trick this is like a, a great trick of oppression where you will willingly restrict your own freedom to move about the country, to move with freedom and autonomy out, out of like a belief. Beliefs are so strong. It's um like you can hear your soul wanting to go in a, in a new direction, but you have to really battle those dark thoughts in order for you to convince yourself that you deserve better in order for you to convince yourself that you're not falling for the wrong um guidance i feel like there's a fear here of wait a minute what's truth and what's a lie this is about you and your self-love journey when you evaluate what your heart feels you have to place yourself as the as the target and the focus of what your heart feels before you can place another person there before you can experience a new love in connection with your love you have to be willing to place yourself as the the compass as the star you're the leading star of your heart's desires not in the accolades, not in how you upgrade or level up, but how you experience loving yourself, what that feels like. It's the best feeling in the world to break away from a prior belief system and experience loving yourself without ever feeling alone. More importantly... Dating yourself, courting yourself, appreciating yourself. This is definitely, um, look at that. There's like two paths here. There's a spiritual path. Because listen, the sage, be devoted and committed. This is like you have no one standing over you forcing you to make these decisions. 
right? The sage goes on that spiritual pilgrimage on their own accord. They're choosing to be devoted to themselves. They're choosing to be committed to themselves. It does not need a book or a doctrine. If you see in this picture, the sage is writing his own message to himself. He's writing his own story with a peacock. So he's living it freely without worrying about who thinks a certain way of him. And he's writing on a, on a leaf for crying out loud. Okay. So the only confirmation that you need is going to be from the way you desire to be loved, treated. This energy here feels like a well-kept person, right? Um, cultivating community, cult cultivating religions, cultivating um, certain paradigms. That's that's that empire emperor energy of being like that alpha female alpha male whatever it is the hierarchy the paradigm yeah you will fall down because I feel like someone here wants to make the right choice so they have no regrets you see what I'm saying? But no matter how many times spirit says your heart's desires is the right choice, someone still can't see or they're still worried and concerned about if the wisdom being delivered to them is actually of light or of dark. No one's going to be able to convince. No one's going to be able to come. No one's coming to save you. All right, I feel like that's what spirit is saying. Like, no one's coming to save you. Christ is not coming down off the cross to come and pick you up and carry you on his back. And if that's what you're waiting on, you're going to be highly disappointed. And that's a fact, not fiction. Right. If we want to go go on that narrative of Christ knowing that he would be sacrificed, who told him that he would be sacrificed? You, you understand if he was that doubtful of his own journey. To the point where. One, he was told that he would be sacrificed Two, it actually happened and he has no regrets about it. Do you really think that he was sitting around wondering and doubting in panic and worry about his death no he couldn't have because he already knew he was gonna die he already knew how it was gonna unfold but think about those paths if a person is delivering a message to you or you're receiving your own intuitive nudges that something is going to become of your fate or something is going to become of your destiny um and then you're looking back at it like, well, wait a minute. You're telling me I'm supposed to die? I didn't sign up for this so I could die. Devoted and committed means that what your calling is for isn't another person telling you to do it. It's when you're the author, when your soul is the person that's writing the blueprint, when you take destiny in your hands, you set yourself free from fate. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but you are not fated to suffer unless you choose to suffer. You are not fated to have any of the experiences of whatever doctrines was given to you, whatever perceptions were given to you, unless you choose to agree with them. Right? What was being manifested Right. As this universal consciousness is your awareness that you are not a victim, your awareness that you're going to have no one to blame. That's the 144. It's your awareness, that activation of your DNA. That I don't I want to die with no regrets. 
I want to cross over with no resentment. A journey well lived with a light heart is the only journey worth taking. So if you have a heavy heart to commit to certain things you don't agree with, understand you're sealing your own fate and your own karma. No matter how many times you come back and do it over and over again. But in this lifetime, what Christ promised was that Christ was going to make you aware that you were made in the image of God and that that consciousness was going to activate within you and no program, no cult, no religion would be able to remove that awareness from within you. Free will. Heaven on earth. Heaven in your realities. The concept of waiting to die to experience heaven is also an illusion. The only way to get through to the higher levels is through your heart chakra. Because Christ represents that chakra, the heart chakra. Christ consciousness, the most high, it's through that portal where you will experience the higher levels of guidance. The higher levels of love, the higher levels of of all experiences. So if you've ever watched the movie Limitless... Um, not limitless. I think it's called time with Justin Timberlake and some other girl. I can't remember her name. Think of this aspect as you have a clock and there's like your wrist has a set amount of time on it. It's your lifespan, right? In certain zones of consciousness, the lifespans are shorter, right? The more, the more you acquire, the more time you get right so pretty much in the lower level consciousness or they're calling the zones that they had people in they were they were so busy working and trying to just pay for time um they were dying young right they were overworked overburdened and fear worry kept them from even seeing that they were on so much borrowed time. I mean, like literally the mom and the son were sharing time. They were scrapping for scraps. Um, And then one day, someone from that community, right? Let's call it a community, came from his rich ass lifestyle, saw something in that boy as far as his personality. Mind you, that person had lived so many lifetimes and had been afforded so many different riches and abundance and experience. But he saw something in Justin Timberlake and he gave him the gift of time. He pretty much gave him everything that was supposed to be a secret. He should have never had that much access to that much time so they sent the bounty out for him the time police (laughs) and I feel like this is what I'm seeing here you're a traveler you're a time traveler and you have certain uh cults you have certain covens and you have certain um establishments that feel like you shouldn't have access to this much fucking time you shouldn't have free reign in the universe so they want to deny you time they want to deny you access right but it's your right to access this divine consciousness it's your right to move freely so of course that energy is going to want to put you back in your stables and it's going to want to put you back into a state of an illusion And so you're going to feel conflicted between your mind and your heart, the karmic and your true love. The true love is a beacon of light because that true love is a reflection of you. So it is you. They are you. You are him. You are her. She is you and vice versa. But if you're unable to see that a separation is 
is only real in the, in a realm where time is the currency then then you would be able to guide each other. You will be able to be of service to each other. You will have value for each other because, you know, you have that person that you go through this journey with. And you're not doing it alone. You feel me? In that movie, there was... I think she came to well, he came to a party because first of all, he had to like break barriers just to even be in that room or at that party or whatever. And um, they tried to offer him a plea. You know what I'm saying? They tried to offer him a deal. And the deal that they were offering Justin Timberlake was, hey, listen, you know, we'll let you have all that time, but you got to indoctrinate to our concepts you got to indoctrinate to our beliefs you're gonna have to sell yourself out and and sell out those people from that community that you came from because they can't go with you it's not for everybody it's only for the elite it's only for a select group of people so here you are they're negotiating with you right let me let me wrap up a pretty ass illusion for you. Let me give you a nice simulation. Tell me what you want and I'll create that lifestyle for you and you can live peacefully in that timeline. So they're waiting on your on your decision. And they're trying to convince you that you won't be able to move about the universe freely and continue traveling and get so, you know, have so much freedom if you don't make a choice. If you don't choose, um, choose a religion, choose a coven, choose a group, choose a this. But your ancestors are saying here that saying here to me that you were never supposed to have to choose. So you don't have to negotiate with terrorists. You feel me? They already made those sacrifices for you. You're a sovereign being. You're a divine being. You don't have to negotiate with terrorists. That wants you to believe that you need to have a green slip to move about the astral realm. That you need to have a, a, a clearance to speak on certain topics and to receive certain downloads nah they can't put a cap on you so yeah they're going to use you know because they're like oh shit you ain't got no fear eight of swords so at this point you need a physical buddy you need a physical partner And when I tell you, like, this partner, if you're a feminine energy, this partner is not about to play about you, okay? This partner is not about to play about you. I'm serious. Yeah. Hmm. I feel like... I feel like one of you may be live a more, a more devoted life. You know what I'm saying? More quiet, peaceful. Like you, you enjoy being alone or having your privacy. <laughs> the other person may be very um, on voyages. They like to travel. They like to or they have to travel for work or whatever. Um, but you guys are going to appreciate each other. Yeah. Clarify why is the vast universe in why is the vast universe in reverse? So right about now, um, this 
is like top priority. I don't know why it is because something's coming up very soon with these cults, covens, and shit. They're about to try some type of attack. I don't know what their plans are. We'll look inside of the stay nested section to see exactly what the hell these corrupt people are planning now. But for the most part, um, this time is so important for you guys to integrate with this partner uh, because you need to be able to maneuver in the spiritual realm. So whatever tricks that they have under their sleeve doesn't take you out. Okay. Because when I see the page of wands, this is like spirit is saying, no, they're restricting you. But at the same time, that corrupt, the corrupt elites are convinced that they're the ones restricting you. So they're having their moment and they're gloating about it and they're watching to see how it affects you. But really, your ancestors have restricted your travel right now, have placed you in like witness protection um, because there's something that needs to. There's something that needs to be anchored or solidified that's what i'm hearing so you're gonna have to work through your fears okay there's an opportunity that's coming in and i'm hearing like uh so someone could be like oh i don't know if i want to do this you know but i feel as if your ancestors is going to give you the truth there's nothing that you won't be able to see. I told you they're going to give you the truth. Ace of Swords. There's nothing that you won't be able to see. You're going to see it long before before anything. You're going to see this attack long before it happens. Yeah. What you have learned about people attacking you, surrender. Why would you argue with a fool? Just to make a fool out of yourself. Like there's no. No one wins in that situation. They're ignorant. So it's like arguing. With the inanimate object. So that's what we're doing now. We're going to argue with. We're going to argue with uh, markers. <laughs> we're going to argue with pens. Like it's like picking up a cup. And being like. I hate you so much right now. Like like who's who, who's about to do that? Nobody. I don't care if it's coming in the form of a person, place, or thing. Because I do feel like someone for you and your person feels very hopeless. And you you, you would think that the crazy part about it is this person's ancestors has been trying to convince them to choose a, a route for them versus... Versus chasing after you, but this person is so hell bent on getting back with you. All right, and you may try to avoid hearing about this person's energy. Like you're tired of hearing about people from the past. You're tired about this and X, Y, and Z. But really, I'm gonna be 100. percent I'm gonna keep it like all the way true with you. Okay. This person, these energies want to be you so bad to the point where they gloating at your demise while reading, watching, and witnessing their own. <laughs> if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. And it's it's just sad. But time is the only thing that, th that they understand. Reaping what they've sown is the only thing that they understand. So Spirit is just saying, stay out of their way. And let them learn because they got they had it coming. They got it coming. Look at that. Temperance and the four swords. And you feel to be at peace. Someone refused to let you go, but they don't have no choice. Whatever emotions you've been feeling or you will feel in the near future, like, oh, my God, you know, I'm tired of sticking. I'm tired of uh, 
toxic people i'm tired of obsessive people i just want to stay away what it doesn't belong to you all right whatever emotions that you're you're feeling is a projection of someone else's emotions and send it away because i feel like a lot of it's already being reversed back to sender yeah and they're they are sealing their fates and it's not the personal because listen baby i have had my share of learning hard lessons okay until I got out of my own way. <laughs> but I feel like for some of you, this may be, you know, people you tried to work with. There still was a lot of people that was no good in your environment that had to be removed or spirit had to remove you. Whatever is about to happen, it's going to be for your highest and greatest good. Because hmm. Someone is about to get a, a dose of their own medicine, trying to distort your visions, trying to use magic to place illusions and cast spells, whether that be through words, prayers, divination, um, any casting whatsoever over you and your spiritual connection that you share with another person hmm. it's backfiring it's not gonna work because like i said they try to put y'all back in the stables but y'all march to the beat of your own drum your heart is pure and free a greater purpose calls you you have unlimited reserves of stamina and strength you follow the winds of change and accomplish your dreams I told you this is all it's about so I'm gonna jump over into the stay nested tier if you would like to book a personal reading all that information is down below and um, as always I'm sending you lots of love wisdom and guidance on your journey I will catch you next time bye Taurus